And we are back. Byzantium's finest. Reason squared. How you doing, Alex? Good to see you. Welcome to my hood, Michael. <laughs> Your pink hood? <laughs> Welcome to my pink hood. Y'all were looking for it. Y'all were waiting for it. Y'all were y'all were ready for the pink hoodie stream. Here it is. We're going to do it. And we're going to refute a whole bunch of probably a dozen really bad anti-Catholic TikTok videos. That's what you're going to get today. But I think we... <laughs> you're killing me over there. <laughs> yeah. You're jamming hard, <laughs> JC. I love this joint. I love this joint. Oh, uh, oh, uh, say I live. Wait, if, if, if before we get started, we're actually going to review our track list that you put together. You, you in fact, put this together. I think it was earlier today, right? What yes. what album is this? So everybody knows the greatest album of all time is Nas's Illmatic, uh -huh. and we're gonna redo that album just like so. You were just playing Jay Z. We've uh, already unveiled when we redo the Jay Z Reasonable Doubt album, Reasonable yeah. Doubt Squared. You've unveiled right. that track listing. Obviously, this is Wu Tang inspired. You've unveiled right. the track listing for Enter the Magisterium. Now it's time for you to reveal <laughs> our track listing for Nas's Illmatic, Oz's Dogmatic. Dogmatic. That's right. Dogmatic. There it is. So you sent yes. this to me earlier. Ooh. I have not seen the track listing. Okay. This is new for me. This is brand new. My eyes have not laid on it yet. All right, yeah. <clears throat> let's see what you got for us. So you got Dogmatic. Okay, I like the name of the yeah. album. That's the album, the, Dogmatic. The Genesis. What, what's the original track on there? I forget. Genesis, it. that's what it is. Genesis, Genesis. is the original, okay. is, is track one on Illmatic. So we just kept it as is. The Genesis is appropriate for there Dogmatic, you right? There and you then go. Tra <laughs> track two on Illmatic is NY State of Grace and all this, or NY State of Mind. Ours, no track two, is My State of Grace. My State, State of, of Grace. Grace. This is epic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Life's a mist. <laughs> yes. Is this track, it? <laughs> track three on Nas is something else. Life's a something else. A word right. that kind of rhymes with mist. Right. But our version is life's a mist or vapor before the before Lord. The Lord. That like that incense. Comes from James. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. That comes from James. It, that right. comes from, I think, James 1 or James, where he says that life's <laughs> a, uh, uh, life is just a vapor and then you evaporate and you know, before the Lord. So instead of life's a, a B word before you die, it's life's right. a miss before the Lord. <laughs> and then track four on Illmatic uh, is the world is yours. And track four on our album is <laughs> the world is yours. But what if you lose your soul? That's the warning. That's the warning. That's that's what Jesus said, right? In the gospel. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. What, 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 if, what is it profit a man? And yeah. Begin yeah, the whole world, but lose his own soul. There you go. Yes. I love it. And track okay. five. This this is probably my favorite because track mm -hmm. five on Illmatic is halftime. Right. Track five for us is time, times, and halftime. I is this a hearkening back to Daniel 9? To Daniel and Revelation <laughs> as well. But time, and Revelation, and right? Time. Yeah. <laughs> So, chapter, so that's deep in prophecy in, there wow okay i'm, I'm impressed time times and have time oh, okay and track, yeah track, <laughs> track six on nomadic is memory lane sitting in the park ours is memory lane sitting in the pew sitting in the pew i love it yes. okay <laughs> track, and now track seven, seven. uh-huh yes track seven on nomadic is one love and track right. seven for us is one god who is love first job <laughs> baby all right and, and one time for your regeneration <laughs> yes <laughs> track eight on illmatic is one time for your mind this one right? is one time for your regeneration, regeneration. That, that's, one that's time true. you can only do it once that's true that's true if, if you need grace after that you get the second plank of baptism which is confession. yes all yes. right so let's see number nine is re represent <laughs> instead of represent <laughs> yeah a bloody sacrifice, which is a representation. <laughs> yep. This is clever. This is this is really clever. I could totally see this album. <laughs> yes, yes. And then number 10, it ain't hard to tell John 6 is literal. <laughs> <laughs> It really isn't hard to tell. You just read it and you're like, oh, yeah, this is pretty straightforward. <laughs> so the but original, of course, is it, it ain't hard to tell. But then you have it ain't hard to tell. John 6 is literal, which is obviously a shot at the Protestants. <laughs> yes. A lot of what I do is take shots at the Protestants. I'm sorry, but they need to know that it's, 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 it's literal. It ain't hard to tell, Michael. You just got to read it. I'm over here crying. These are these are epic. We need to put 
all three of these in a community post or something so everybody can appreciate them all in one spot, you know. And you gotta remember all, all of the track listings you've done so far. Yes, and you gotta remember we also got because Nas gave us Illmatic and he gave us Stillmatic. <laughs> So I got it. The next one is still dogmatic. still dogmatic, right? Because you do still once it's dogmatic, it's always dogmatic. It's always right? dogmatic. A lot of people forget that they think that yeah, dog, dogma doesn't change. Yeah. Crazy you can't, dudes. You you can't undo a dogma. You can't you reverse can't a dogma. A dog. I mean, once it's dogmatic, it's it's still dogmatic. It's so there you go. I mean, the, the album writes itself from right there, right? Yeah. It's like every other council that we have it just like reaffirms the previous council because it's it's like that's what it's like still dogmatic, baby. Come on now. <laughs> so next time you come for our next stream, you have to have still dogmatic track list for us. I'm already yeah, I already know. I think I already know what that looks like. So yeah. Oh man, this is epic. Okay. Uh let me clear my eyes. I was over here crying, laughing. This is epic. Okay. I am ready. To dive in i think we got like a dozen anti-catholic videos some of them are shorter uh, a few uh you know of them are a little bit longer but most of them are just kind of snippets one to two minutes or something like that <clears throat> all right this one is um let me see actually the name of it catholic church suppress the bible oh that sounds promising okay so let's go ahead i'm going to pull up the screen and we're going to watch it together and let's see how the Catholic Church has suppressed the Bible, allegedly. For those who say, oh, religion's a control mechanism, and the Illuminati wrote the Bible to control people, well, if you're going to use something to control people, you want everyone to have it. You want everyone to read it. You don't want to make it punishable by possess that thing. And you're not going to make it only available in Latin, which no one can read. So if it's a control mechanism, you're going to publish it in every available language. You're going to be giving them away for free to everyone. And you're going to be offering rewards and prizes for reading your Bible and being able to recite it. And that's not what happened at all. The, the Dark Ages, and they're called the Dark Ages for that specific reason. The Bible was kept from humanity. And up until the 1200s, from the 500 AD up until the 1200 AD. And then in 1203, Pope Innocent the third began the inquisition and the inquisition was not about burning witches it was about burning christians and over a 600 year period from the 1200s until the late 1800s the roman catholic church is responsible for murdering over 50 million christians who refused to eat that wafer saying it was the body of christ and drink that wine saying it was the blood of christ as they knew that was blasphemy they knew that was all crap they wouldn't rent they wouldn't give their authority to the vatican they wouldn't confess to the Vatican. They would only read the word of God, and that's it. Wow. Okay. Where do we even begin with such an insane um, view? Like, where, where do we even begin with this? I, I don't know. You want to take a stab at it? I don't even know where to begin with this. <laughs> Michael, I've never confessed to the Vatican. I've never <laughs> even been to the Vatican. Hey, I'm going there. I'll, I'll be the Vatican. Remember yeah, what I told you. You have to try the pizza. The, the, the pizza. That's what I hear. That's what I that's, hear. I'll definitely try the pizza. That's the most important thing you must do. <laughs> um, but how about we begin? Okay. How about you take the uh, the, uh, the the Catholic Church suppress the Bible, and then I'll go to the Inquisition. How does that sound? Golly, that is just absurd. Um, now, what you do have throughout church history on this question, even though the the uh, Catholic Church made the Bible very accessible, um, often not only audibly through sermons, but also through visual representation, through art and iconography. Um, what he's thinking of, however, are cases where the Catholic Church was prohibiting certain unauthorized translations of the Bible because they contain heresy in them. So the Catholic Church wasn't opposed to translating the Bible in the vernacular per se. Um, and in fact, it did actually initiate this. The first English Bible was actually a Catholic Bible. Um, and it's, uh, in fact, the original Dewey Rheims, uh, which is, by the way, filled with all kinds of great commentary from the church fathers. It's unfortunate it was kind of taken away from later editions of the Dewey Rheims. But if you get one of the original Dewey Rheims, it has some pretty epic uh, commentary from the church fathers. But that's just a side note. But that's effectively what's going on is the Catholic Church was suppressing unauthorized translations that had heresy in them. Now, if you're a parent 
Do you want your children reading heresy? Do you want your children being misled? Or would you as a parent not guide your children? Of course you would guide them. And of course you would say, hey, no, this actually isn't a good translation of the Bible. Here's a good one. That's what the Catholic Church did. Now, we're summarizing a lot of church history here. Also, we're only focusing on the Latin rite. We, we haven't even talked about the Eastern churches and the history of the Bible there. He's, he's conflating. He's consolidating everything as just the history of the Latin rite. Even, in, even then, he doesn't even understand it. Exactly, yeah. And um, also, people will throw this claim out all the time that the Catholic Church was keeping, was keeping people from reading the Bible not realizing that the vast majority of people back then, a, a high percentage of them were actually illiterate and, you know, didn't know how to read anyway. And mm -hmm. you would go to mass, you could hear the Bible being read to you. And again, like you had mentioned too, in iconography and there were all of these visual representations of what we see in, in the Bible. That's what it's for is to educate those who, who didn't have the capacity to read. And uh, yeah, the, the church was translating the Bible into the vernacular long before anyone else did. And, and if it took a while for them to do it, it's because, first of all, we're talking about a time when we didn't have the printing press yet. The printing press was like a brand new invention. Mm -hmm. And when you're translating the Bible into other languages, you have to make sure that those translations are, um, are solid and that they're good translations that don't teach any error, that don't teach heresy. So it takes, it takes a process. Now, this guy didn't mention this in his video, but a lot of people bring up the fact that uh, when you go to Catholic churches, like in, in the medieval times, that the Bible would be chained, you know, to the church itself. So that, you know, and, and they see that as like, oh, the Bible, you know, the, the, the church had the Bible in chains because they didn't want anyone to read it. So it was in chains. Well, no, the reason it was in chains was so that people could go read it and that nobody would uh, run off with the Bible because back then all Bibles had to be handwritten. And it took like, I don't know, a full year to do just one uh, handwritten uh, uh, copy of the entire Bible that monks would have to would have to handwrite. So they would chain it so that nobody would steal it because Bibles were very, very, very expensive. You're not going to leave something that expensive out in the open for just anybody to be able to go and put their hands on. And one of the biggest problems of the Middle Ages as well uh, was that... Um, People would go and they would like read the Bible themselves. You know, you could go up to the Bible and read it and they would be tearing pages out because they would see something that they they'd read something that they really like and they'd be tearing pages out. That was like the biggest pain in the neck for priests back in the day was that the Bible would have would have torn pages uh, in them. So even even having the Bibles chained didn't uh, didn't uh, uh, completely solve the problem of people trying to steal scripture. People were ripping pages off. And, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a complete misrepresentation of history and, and what uh, what actually happened. And this is just the first half of what he mentioned, Michael, because then he goes on to talk about the Inquisition. How, what did he say? He said that the Catholic Church killed 50 million people. Yeah. 50 million people. So that's actually a conservative uh, number, Mike, because many people wrong, wrongly believe that the, that the Inquisition in Europe, killed like 100 million people, right? That's like the figure that a lot of people throw out who, are, who don't know. And there weren't even like 100 million people in Europe at the time. And they were saying that that's how many people the Catholic Church killed. I'm glad he brought this up. Let's let's get this out of the way now. Okay. What First of all, what is the Inquisition? What does the word Inquisition mean? The word Inquisition just means to question. You are questioning, right? A lot of people don't know that the Inquisition that began uh, in the in the late 12th century, and actually, a lot of people don't know the Inquisition is actually still presently, currently going on. It's called the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith. People don't people don't realize that this is actually still happening. Um, the Inquisition was actually something that began at the request of the secular authorities. It started in France. It happened also in Germany. That also happened in Spain. The secular authorities wanted the Church to question the Christians in Europe to see who was truly a Christian and who wasn't. And the reason that this inquisition began at the request of the secular authorities of, of, of the kings and queens and royalty was because there were people that were non-Christians that, uh, that were actually, it was Arabs, it was Muslims. They were coming in to Europe and they were posing as Christians so that they could live there and that they could kind of smuggle their families in. And um, the uh, different uh, secular authorities saw this as a, as a security risk for Europe. 
So they wanted to weed out all of the fake Christians from the real Christians. So the secular authorities asked the Catholic Church to uh, do an inquisition of everyone in Europe, of all of the Christians, so that they could figure out who really wasn't a Christian and who was actually uh, just posing as a Christian, trying to find actually the Muslims. Um, and what happened is that whenever a Muslim or even actually even a Jew was discovered as living in Europe, uh, posing as a Christian, they would actually get deported. They would get deported and they would get uh, sent back to, uh, to, to where they came from, right? It wasn't 100 million people that were, that were put to death in the Inquisition. It wasn't 50 million people. Michael, do you know the number of how many people were actually put to death by the Inquisition? Do you know the number? Yeah, my professor said it was a little, little over 2,000. 2,000. 2,000 people during like a 600-year pe uh, period that were given the death penalty. And on top of that, guess what? The Catholic Church never, ever, 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 ever put a single person to death. It wasn't the Catholic Church that was giving people the death penalty. It was the secular authorities. Well, what happened is that the Catholic Church would try somebody, give them a fair trial. They would be declared as, as an obstinate heretic, obstinate meaning that the Catholic Church would say, hey, would you, would you believe, would you profess as heresy? You have to let go of your heresy and repent. And those that would say, no, I'm going to continue in my heresy, and they would explicitly uh, uh, deny the church, and they would, they would not obey the church. They would say, no, I don't care that this is heresy according to you. I believe this heresy. Then the church would say, okay, we're going to turn you over to the secular authorities. And they would tell the secular authorities, here's a person that is a professed, uh, manifest heretic, and they would let the secular authorities do whatever they were going to do. Because um, while there was a uh, there was a distinction between church and state, the church could only declare you a heretic, and then the state decided what to do with you. Mm -hmm. um, because remember, but in in this time, you know, in Europe, every European country and kingdom was a Christian country or a Christian kingdom. So if you're a heretic, not only are you violating <clears throat> God's law, you're not only you know violating God. You're actually violating the state. You're violating the secular yeah. authorities as well. Yeah. So they have the authority to punish you however they seem fit. And again, over a 600-year period, the state uh, seemed fit to put certain uh, heretics, not even all of them, about 2,000 of them to death. The vast mm -hmm. majority of them were, were not put to death. They were in prison for life. A lot of them were giving like really, really extreme penances until they... Uh, until they um, repented and, and turned back to orthodoxy but um again the church never put a single person to death it was a state and it wasn't 50 million it wasn't 100 million it was about 2000 over a 600 year period and again the inquisition actually exists to this day it never ended it's an office the inquisition is actually an office set up by the vatican and it's gone uh, through uh, different names uh throughout the centuries but right now it's called the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith and the Inquisition still happens. The only difference is, is that now the state doesn't put anybody to death. So if people want to accuse the Catholic Church of putting people to death, ask them if the Catholic Church was doing that. The Inquisition has never ended. It still happens. It still exists. Why isn't anybody getting put to death now? Exactly. Because the Catholic Church never has put anybody to death. It was always a secular state. And because now there's more of a separation between church and state in Europe, um, that's why we don't see capital punishment for crimes against the church. You know, you mentioned there the expense of, um, <clears throat> you know, handwritten Bibles. Yeah. I, I, I want to show you something. Um, here is a leaf, one page from a handwritten Bible from 1450 wow. uh, in France of the Psalms. It's two-sided, of course, but I'm only showing one side. Um, mm. And... I don't know if you can see, but there's gold in there. It is incredibly detailed and intricate. Mm -hmm. This was, again, handwritten. And so the point is, for a Bible to be produced, it was incredibly expensive and took a yes. very, very long time. Um, so obviously, that's going to be something that the church is going to guard and especially protect from thieves. And hence, again, as you noted, the chained Bible, keeping this thing changed so people don't run off with this incredibly expensive uh, item. 
Um, so yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. The case with the chain Bible, even though he didn't mention it, I'm glad you. Yeah. No. So I see somebody in the chat saying that these aren't secular states. Uh, okay, civil state, the civil, the civil authority, not the ecclesial authority. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The civil authority. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, share the next one. Now, this is an individual I've actually I've critiqued him before, and I've also had him on the show. Uh, Mike Signorelli is a Protestant. Mike has been on your show, Michael. Mm -hmm. He yeah, has. Yeah. I knew I knew him from somewhere. Okay, yeah. let me see. before you yeah. play the video, let me tell you something, Michael. This Mike guy, I um I don't know why. I've never interacted with him before ever. He blocked me on Instagram. I think that he was putting out videos and people were like tagging me saying, Oh, voice of reason already debunked this. You should debate voice of reason, you should whatever. He he blocks me, and and, and according to people that have reached out to me on Instagram and, and on TikTok. They tell me that whenever um, anybody mentions me, he blocks them. So I think he's aware of me and he doesn't, he's not really bad about it. He knows I'm a goon. <laughs> he knows I'll come at him. So he's he blocked me because he doesn't want it with me. He doesn't want it with, with, with the voice of reason. He doesn't want it with the voice face killer because he knows. He, <laughs> There you go. You got it. Knows, I was gonna say, put knows. it on with the pink. Yeah, go ahead. Let, let's yeah, just leave that knows. on. Let's leave that he on. Knows I'm a goon. Yeah, he he knows it, and um, he blocked me. That boy blocked me. So here's what I wanted. Here's what I want everybody watching to do. I uh -huh. want everybody. I want everybody to keep mentioning me, mention Michael, mention the show, mention voice face killer <laughs> to him because he can't block everybody. And eventually he can't ignore me. And I'm going to I challenge him to a debate. I we challenge him to a debate. <clears throat> I would certainly hope that um, or host that that debate if y'all want to do that. And <clears throat> if he doesn't want to do a debate, he could certainly come on and do a discussion. I know he has an open invitation to come back on the show. I had a discussion with him and had to correct a lot of misunderstandings on his part. I, and, I knew um, I recognized him. I, I can't believe that I had. From, yeah, that's right. You did have him on your show. I can't believe it. He blocked me, man. Yeah, he, he just has some really horrible under, um, misunderstandings about the Catholic Church that needed to be corrected. And so I invited him on and, you know, we did that in a, you know, in a charitable, productive conversation. I haven't heard from him since. Uh, he knows that he's welcome to come back on. So um, that's kind of where we stand. All right. So let's share the screen, however, and we're, we're going to still review it uh, and critique his argument. OK, so this one is <clears throat> Mike Signorelli. Pagan temples as Catholic churches. Golly. Okay, and this was one day ago? Hmm. There's over 900 Catholic churches in Rome. And when I said, how did the Catholic Church build 900 churches? The historian said, no, they were 900 pagan temples that got converted to Catholic churches. And they didn't even remove the gods, they just renamed them. Let me give you an example. Every statue of Jupiter became Peter. They said, how do we just replace? So they took men that were humble and made them into little deities called saints and then convince you to pray to them instead of going boldly before the throne of grace and praying to God and they nullified the work of the cross where the veil was rent so we could walk into the holy of holies I don't need to talk to Paul I can talk to Jesus directly because of the blood of Jesus Christ okay Mr. Signorelli stop it you're, you're making yourself again once again look like a fool please stop this is atrocious and it's also shameful because you're you're slandering the catholic church as i told you last time you're still slandering catholics please stop this uh bearing false witness is a grave sin that's in your own bible and you should perhaps look more into catholicism before you continue to bear false witness i warned you once i'm gonna do it again you're bearing false witness stop doing that if you really follow jesus you really love Jesus, you really want to be honest and truthful, then do some better research. I have a whole lot I could say about this, but go ahead and uh, chime in, jump in, and um, I'll, I'll offer some thoughts after that. Okay, so first of all, he was talking about the 900 pagan temples in uh, Rome that became Catholic churches. Well, I hope that he knows. He probably doesn't know. I don't think this man does very good <clears throat> research. That's why I need everybody to continue to point me out, you know, point me out to him so that he knows that I want to talk to him because I want to talk to that boy. Why wouldn't he want to talk to this face? 
anyway um <laughs> voice face i mean who wouldn't want to talk, talk to voice face? face exactly so here's the thing those pagan temples that later became churches okay so christianity became the, the religion of the roman empire in the late fourth century the edict of the edict of thessalonica with the emperor <clears throat> theodosius right all of those pagan pagan temples literally from you know you know one day to the next were no longer used as pagan temples because christianity became the official religion however those temples would remain there unused for about 500 years before they ever became catholic churches because um paganism was still uh running rampant in the roman empire it didn't just uh die from one day to the next so the christian church as a matter of prudence said no we're not going to use these temples we're going to first completely stamp out paganism and make sure that paganism dies here in, in the Roman Empire. And then once everyone becomes Christian, once everyone becomes Catholic, then we can consecrate these pagan temples, consecrate them and turn them into temples for, uh, for Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what happened. It wasn't until I think it was in the ninth century, eighth or ninth century, where uh, those temples started being used as, ch as churches. So it didn't just happen, you know, from one day to the next. It took literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years for that transition to happen. And um, again, they made sure to do it when paganism no longer existed in the Roman Empire. So, uh, so yeah. And then also, uh, what else did he say? He said so much crazy stuff. That I don't even know. I don't even know what what to say. Next. We'll watch it again. If, and, and if go he has a, it again, but... so so if he has a problem with uh, temples that were used for fake deities, for fake false deities being used uh, as uh, Christian temples. And I mentioned this last time on the stream. Does he, has, does he have a problem with Christians who wear crosses around their neck? Because the cross was a pagan, Roman, and Persian symbol. It is a pagan symbol. That is a fortified pagan symbol. And all Christians use it. He doesn't have a problem with that. Why would he have a problem? If he doesn't have a problem with, with pagans, converting and becoming Christian, why does he have a problem with the buildings that pagans used being converted, so to speak, being consecrated to Jesus Christ? Because if he has a problem with them, then he shouldn't allow pagan converts and he shouldn't even allow Christians to wear the cross because the cross is a pagan symbol. So what, what's what's the deal there? He's being pretty inconsistent if you ask me. Yeah, wedding rings are also a pagan symbol. I, wedding I rings he, are pagan symbols. I wonder symbols. if he, he wear a wedding wears ring? one. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. He, maybe he'll take his wedding ring off and actually be consistent. I, I... If he's be, and also he said that saints that we that they're little deities. No, saints are not deities. Saints are members of the body of Christ. He should know this. There's no reason for him to not know this, and that's why he blocked me because he knows that I would embarrass him and I would make him look like a fool. Because I don't even need to make him look like a fool. He does a good job of that himself, making himself look like a fool. But I'm sick and tired of these people going on the internet and slandering Jesus Christ Church and saying things that aren't true, especially when they know that they're not true. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm not going to have it. So I need. I'm pretty sure I had already corrected him on yes. this. This was posted know. one day ago, but posted by somebody. I don't know when this was filmed, but I know I corrected him on this. Let me say a couple of things. Well, there are 900 churches in Rome. I'm almost quite certain they are not all reconverted pagan temples. I'm, I'm almost absolutely sure of that. So right. I think he needs to actually substantiate that instead of just throwing it out, produce his evidence. Um, <clears throat> but I will say this. If you look at Gregory the Great, when he writes to Augustine of Canterbury, you know, who has a mission to England. And Augustine asks him, hey, well, you know, we're converting these people, but what do we do with all these pagan temples? Uh, Gregory, the Pope, writes back to him and says, here's what you're to do. Get rid of all the idols in there. Get rid of all of them. Every single one of them. Get rid of all of those things that are profane. Go in there, have an exorcism, and say Mass and sanctify that place to God, make it a holy place for God. And in fact, that is exactly what God does with us when he converts us. We were once children of Satan. We were dedicated to Satan. We were temples of Satan, if you will. What God does with the Holy Spirit is he comes into us and transforms us. He exercises evil from us, casts out the evil, 
and he then begins to indwell us. If God can do that with the temples of our body, obviously we can do that with regular physical temples, clearly. Amen. We did not keep a whole bunch of pagan statues and just convert them to the saints. This is just slander, and this is not substantiated. He needs to produce his evidence that is not the case. Um, more, moreover, he mentions the issue of the intercession of the saints. I don't need Paul. I don't need Paul. I could just go directly to Jesus and... Yeah, that's not what I'm Paul tired says. Of, I'm tired of hearing that. I can go Paul directly to that. Jesus. I can go to him. I don't need Paul. I'm just so Paul sick of that. this uneducated, ignorant argument. Nobody is saying you can't go directly to God. We all the time go directly to God. Have you ever heard us pray to our Father? Have you ever heard of a Catholic Mass? The vast majority of the liturgy is directed to God. Obviously, we go directly to Jesus. Obviously, we go directly to God. You don't have to have but half a brain to know that. So this is a just stupid argument that I continue to hear over and over. And I just think, look, if you're going to be an honest person, it would take five seconds to Google that argument and realize how ridiculous it is. Stop yeah. repeating it. Obviously, you go directly to God. We already believe that. Of course, you're to go directly to God. Nobody says that you have to go to the saints as if you can't go to God. Nobody is saying yeah. that for the exact same reason that you ask your friend to pray for you, even though you believe you can go directly to God, and you do, but you ask your friend to pray for you, that is the same reason we ask the saints to pray for us. And then you'll hear the common response, but they're dead and my friends are alive. Jesus corrects that. Jesus corrects your misunderstanding. And he says he is the God of the living, not of the dead. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they're not dead. They're the living. He literally corrected your misunderstanding. Read the Bible more. Don't use the arguments of the enemies of Jesus when Jesus himself refutes you. So obviously they're alive. And then you'll hear the next silly argument. Well, how do you know they can hear you? Well, the again, the New so. Testament, the book of Revelation says that. They're aware of what's going on on earth. And you have right. in Revelation chapter 8, the angel presenting the prayers of the saints to God. And so yeah. all of the material for this theological conclusion of the intercession of the saints is there in scripture. Yeah. These are just atrocious arguments, and they show me a person who's not being honest and sincere yeah. in their engagement of Catholicism when they employ these arguments yeah. because they are so easy to know why they're wrong. They're so, there's an abundance of material to show that this is wrong. That for anybody to continue to produce this tells me it comes from a bad place. It does not come from a place of goodwill. If you have goodwill, you want to represent your interlocutor accurately. Right. You might not agree with them, but you want to represent them accurately because you serve the God of truth, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. You want to represent them accurately. You don't want to say, well, I'm going to engage this Muslim. You Muslims believe in Krishna, and you venerate Krishna five times a day. What? No yeah. Muslim is going to take you seriously, and you're not honestly yeah. trying to represent a Muslim when you're refuting them when yeah. you say such silly things. But that's what it's like when you say that, well, we have to go to Paul. We have to go to the saints as if we can't go directly to Jesus. Excuse me, you're slandering us. That is not yeah. our position. And you could easily know that. A simple Google, Google search would tell yeah. you this. And every objection that they make explicitly contradicts Scripture. Hebrews oh, yeah. 12 Hebrews 12 says that the saints are aware of what we do here on earth. The Gospel of Luke says that there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than all those who don't think they need repentance. So if they're rejoicing in heaven, it means that they know when we repent, when we come to Christ. Um, and, you know, and, and the martyrs under the altar in the book of Revelation, the, the Apocalypse. Revelation they, 5 they, and Revelation 8. Yeah. They're aware of what's taking place on earth. Yes. You also have Hebrews that talks about a cloud of witnesses. They're obviously yep. aware of what's taking place on earth. So they want to, they do know what's going on. They want to intercede on our behalf. Revelation 8, they do intercede on our behalf. Yep. And for the exact same reason that you ask your friends to pray for you, why wouldn't you yep. ask the saints to also pray for you? And no Catholic goes to Mary or the saints alone. Every right. Catholic prays directly to God. Even if, if you're praying the rosary, you also have prayers that are directed to God in that rosary. So and, literally no Catholic believes that you have to go to the saints to communicate to God. This is silly. Stop it. 
and not only that, it's impossible to go to any particular saint without going to God because all of the saints are part of the body of Christ. So when you go to one person in the body of Christ, you, you're going to the entire body, including the head who is Jesus Christ. And what he said in that video, he said, I don't need to go to Paul. Well, that's not what Paul himself said. In Again, 1 Corinthians 12, Protestants are always violating 1 Corinthians 12. It says that one member of the body cannot say to another member of the body, I don't need you. You can't say it. So he violates scripture and what he just said. I had hoped maybe after my conversation with him that he would have dropped the anti-Catholic rhetoric. But if this is within the last few years, because it was within the last few years that I had him on, if this was a video within the last few years, it seems that he hasn't changed. Yeah, it's recent. Um, I challenge him to a debate. I want all the people that are watching this, get his attention. I, I He blocked me. I don't know why. I've never interacted with him. I've never said a single word about the guy. But I want to debate him now, especially because he blocked me. So tell him to uh, to uh, be brave. Be I don't think he does brave. debates. I think he wants discussions, which is fine. He's okay. welcome we'll to come back and have a discussion. Yeah. But I will be very candid. Um, if, if you're watching this, Mr. Signorelli, you're welcome to come back on. But I will be very blunt with you. Um, if you're continuing to spread this anti-Catholicism, you're bearing false witness and you're going to get called out for it because this is the kind of stuff, you know, OK, I let it slide the first time. Maybe you just didn't know better, but I had already brought this to your attention for you to continue to do this. If you're continuing to do it, that that's an issue. And that's now starting to touch on an issue of dishonesty and uh, bad will. So I think we'll have a little bit of a different conversation than we had last time, because last time I assumed you had goodwill. If you're continuing with this, I no longer assume that. So the conversation is going to be a little different. All right. So let's go ahead and look at the next one. Uh, this one is Muslim and Christian debate head coverings. Oh, gosh. I've seen this guy before. I don't know what his name is. Uh, but I've definitely seen it before. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Let's see here. Okay, let's begin. Let me ask something. Do you believe in the Bible? Here. I believe in the Bible. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head and covered dishonors her head, for that is one and the same that her head should be shaved. For a woman is not covered, then let her be sworn. But if it's shameful for her to be sworn or shaved, let her be covered. Why don't you cover your head? It's in your Bible right here. Yeah, I don't. I think it's in your New Testament Bible right here. Right here. I will show you another one. Right. Hold on. Can, can I listen? There, there is too many people. I'll talk to you. Okay. Who wants to ask a question? Pick a number. Join the queue because he's next. Uh, all right. Let's maybe stop there. All right. So, okay. Head coverings. We Where know a wanna... little bit about head coverings, don't we? Yeah, a li little bit, right? <laughs> Where do you, you, you want to start with this? Uh? Well, there. <laughs> I know a little bit about head coverings, face coverings, everything. <laughs> um, well, why are they debating? Um, why are they debating disciplines? You know, mm -hmm. disciplines mm -hmm. are valid and they're there for a reason, but it's not something that's essential to the deposit of faith. So, I mean, for most, I can understand why a Muslim would say, hey, over here, you know, Paul says wear head coverings, but a lot of the mm -hmm. women now don't mm -hmm. wear hair coverings. So that, that's completely, that's that's understandable. I, mm -hmm. you know, That's totally understandable. That's when, you you know, on the Christian side, you have to, uh, you know, say, well, okay, this is a discipline. This isn't something that is, uh, that Jesus commanded us to do. It's a discipline. And, and actually, it's a discipline that has persisted for, almost 2000 years it wasn't until recently in the last few decades where that discipline was really no longer enforced but it was a discipline enforced by canon law so uh, yeah i think the confusion comes from the fact that the lack of head coverings is something that is very recent in the life of the church yeah i mean as you point out this is an issue of discipline and so this is where a person is approaching scripture just from a place of ignorance. And right. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't appreciate it if I did the exact same with the Quran. Likewise, if, if, if you expect others to research the Quran before they present a really bad argument, uh, do the same with others, with, with the Bible, which the Quran actually uh, confirms and backs up. And so, and that then makes an internal inconsistency with Islam because literally the Quran contradicts the Bible, but the Quran tells you to go to the Bible. Um, but the issue with this is, again, as you noted, 
disciplinary. So yeah, you're you're going to see some people who don't wear head coverings. Now, um, you know, sometimes in the Eastern liturgies, we still have that. Sometimes in the Roman Rite, you'll see it. It's an optional thing. Uh, canonically, at least it's optional. Um, but yeah, it's a matter of discipline. So simply pointing to people not wearing head coverings here. That's all it is. And, and number two, Paul is talking about during the liturgy. Um, right. So he he doesn't even realize that. He thinks that it's just literally something that he's referring to outside of the liturgy. And the lady outside of the liturgy isn't wearing a head covering. So what gives? Mm -hmm. He's talking about during the liturgy. And he yeah. uses that discipline to then articulate a spiritual principle, the headship of the husband uh, over the wife and over the children. And that's effectively what he's getting at. Okay. So, yeah, pretty weak stuff, right? Any, anything else you want to add to that before we jump to the next one? I think that's pretty much it. That was pretty, pretty simple. Pretty simple. All right. We're going to have to take a quick break here. I have a very important phone call I need to take. Sorry. Uh, no so let's take about a five minute break and we'll meet back. Y'all stay tuned. We got plenty more videos coming. Hang tight.
All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Okay, where do we leave off? We left off with uh, one of these, one of these TikTok videos. This one is gonna be about an exorcism. Oh boy! <sighs> can you hear me? By the way, I can hear you. I you am the set? Pink Power Ranger. <laughs> I feel like a giant bottle of Pepto Bismol. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the pink power ranger. <laughs> we got good. different pinks going. Like we should have coordinated this. <laughs> I know. I know. This is all I could find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go over this one. This is uh just an exorcism. I don't have any further description for it. Oh, yes, I remember this video though. Okay. Um this guy is saying this is a real deal exorcism. Now you've you've seen a real deal exorcism before. I sure have. Yeah. Uh, so I look forward to your commentary on it. All right, let me share my screen and let's begin. Totally possessed by a demon and was completely set free. Look at this. Every demonic spirit making this boy Hold on. not have confidence and speak against his identity. You must leave him now in. Hold on. You can restart that one right there. This video is absolutely pathetic. Yeah. All right, pathetic. One more time. Totally possessed by a demon and was completely set free. Look at this. Every demonic spirit making this boy not have confidence and speak against his identity. You must leave him now in Jesus' name. You must leave him. I break every generational curse off of him now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And on three, I command every demonic spirit attached to that generational curse must leave him in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Did you know that casting out demons is a sign that's supposed to follow every single believer? If you know that the devil is no match for the name of Jesus, then subscribe for more. <sighs> Bro. <laughs> she gave she, she gave the demon the 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 mom thing, the you know, when when mom's gotta discipline the kids and they're and they're like, one, <laughs> two. <laughs> and then you better do what your mom told you before she gets to three, because if not, there's gonna be hell to pay. She gave the demon the mom treatment. <laughs> That's crazy. And the demon listened. That's how scary moms can get, I guess. That's crazy. <laughs> she bring out the chanclas and it's over. I mean. Oh my goodness. That's oh. that's what yeah. Just show the chancla, the power just of the show chancla. it, just whip yeah. it out, and, it. and the demon will flee. <laughs> What, what, how does anybody take this seriously? I and, mean, for, and the cr mm, go ahead. I was just gonna say the the crowd when the little boy dropped to his knees, the crowd was like, <laughs> like if they're like watching golf or something, like they just saw someone hit hit a birdie or something. I don't know what the hell. And he and just they're, goes, they're, they're clapping like they're yeah, they're they're, they're clapping like they're watching a tennis match or something. Come on, come and on. Yeah, this is uh, that supposedly kid looked, an exorcism. And they're clapping like they're watching looked, a... Well, he, to me, he looked like he was being pressured into this. You you can tell on his face. He looks like he's being pressured into this. Poor thing. Poor kid. That's and, not his fault. Shame on the people who are putting him up to that, who are adults, though. And, of course, this would be happening, like, in a crowd, right? Like in a crowd, this would be happening where they have to, there has to be a group of people around and the lady has to be looking nice in her high heels and she has her hair done and her makeup and all of that. New title for Mary, our lady of the chunk. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> she is the terror of right? demons, right? So right, actually, exactly. You just show, I saw a video of a, of a lady once. There was an alligator swimming right up to her. She takes her chonkles off, shows it to the alligator. The alligator runs. <laughs> like he, 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 he goes the opposite way, starts swimming away really fast. And the in the caption was the power of the chonkle. It works. It works. It really does. It really does. Oh, uh, well, okay. So he says that it's a sign of every Christian. 
that demons are cast out. Like, so every Christian is supposed to be an exorcist. That is not at all <clears throat> what the passage he refers to says. Mark um, 16, right? It, it will be a sign of the community as a whole that it's casting yeah. out demons. So Christianity as a community, one sign for it is that it casts out demons. And then, yeah, that's true of the apostles and those who come after them. But that doesn't necessarily mean every single Christian now is going to or has to be an exorcist. No, not every Christian has the same charism or ministry or task. Not everybody's an eye. Not everybody's a hand. Not everybody's a foot in the body of Christ. People have different ministries and different roles to play. And not everybody is going to be an exorcist. In fact, that would be very dangerous for some uh, Christians out there to start trying to cast out real demons, not like whatever this was. This wasn't real. Yeah. <sighs> and if you go to Mark 16, where uh, that's what he was referring to, I think is Mark 16. It doesn't say that everyone would be able to cast out demons. It says these signs will accompany those yeah. who believe, meaning that the believers will see these signs, but the people that are that are doing the signs themselves, it's the apostles and ministers, and and you have you know in the book of Acts, it contrad if, if your idea from Mark sixteen is that every single believer can perform an exorcism, the book of Acts contradicts that because again the sons of Sceva in Acts uh, I think it's nineteen right, um, so that's a, it's a misreading of Mark sixteen, which is very easy to misread if you read Mark sixteen like that you might. It's very easy to come to that conclusion. But yeah. That's not what it means. It means that all believers will see these things happen, not that they will all do these things. It also says in Mark 16 that they would take up snakes and they won't and kill them, poison. you know, right? And yeah. drink poison. This is where you get the snake handlers from because they abuse Mark 16 in the same way this guy abused it. And they say, well, this has to apply to everybody, right? Not just the apostles or a, a group of people. This applies to everyone. Therefore, a true sign that you're a Christian is you pick up snakes. They pick up snakes, they get bit, and then they die. Well, you didn't have enough faith, brother. <laughs> <laughs> didn't have That's enough faith, response. brother. You didn't have enough faith, brother. You, you, you aren't really believing in Jesus. And so what, that's kind of that... where they go with it. What do you call it? Your, your Pastor Bob? Your Bob? Pastor Bob? My, pet, my Pastor boys? Bob, yeah. People in the chat uh, were like, oh, the Pastor Bob voice gets me every time. <laughs> it, it, co it comes Jesus out of the on occasion. I don't know where. It just comes out of nowhere. It's not even voluntary. Um, Is It, it Michael, just comes out of nowhere. I don't know where. Look, Michael, come on. I'm going to tell people how it really is because you really have conversations over the phone all the time. <laughs> You know that's how you really speak. Is that how you really know that's talk? your real voice. <laughs> this is an exclusive for all of the Reason and Theology listeners. The Pastor Bob voice is really oh, Michael's that, real voice. That's, that's my how real he sounds voice. over the phone. That's how he sounds over the phone. The this voice is a cover-up voice. Now, it's the cover-up. He really sounds yeah. like that over the phone. He calls me. He goes, well, hey, look at here, Alex. Well, look we got, here, what Alex, time I'm is this? telling you. <laughs> What's time the stream supposed to be again? I'd mark you wrong on my calendar. I forgot. I forgot, I forgot what, what time, time <laughs> we were supposed to Michael get Lockett on the exposed. old stream yard. I'm Michael sorry, Lockett I had to expose you, an RNT. Um, I, I actually have some. I'm not going to reveal it on today's stream, but it will be a sneak peek for next stream. There is something to reveal about you. I'm not going to tell y'all what it is, but there is a sneak peek. Right, something is going to be revealed next Byzantium's finest, and that's all I'm gonna say. And it is about Alex, and it is true, it is real, but that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not unless you want to say something else to add to that. I'm not adding anymore. <laughs> I'm good. It, it's gonna be epic, by the way. Y'all are y'all are gonna love it, so y'all have to stay tuned for that one. That's gonna be fun. <clears throat> be so exposed, so exposed. <laughs> You want to tell them the name of the show or no? No, no, no. Oh, okay, I don't want to okay. say well, right, I don't we'll want to say anything. We'll I'm there. scared. Well, okay. We'll hold off there. <laughs> all right. So let's get back to it. So we got more videos here. Uh, we have Holy Spirit told him to do this. Gosh, stop. One thing that <laughs> angers me so much is when a person says, God told me to do this. God told me to tell. Mm, I get so frustrated over that. Like, no, he did it. It's you. You told it's yourself. You. That's your inner voice. Like I said in the last stream, it's your inner voice that we learned about in preschool. That's what's talking to you. It's not God. Stop blaming God for all these things because it ends up backfiring. And then you say, 
well, God told me to do No, he didn't. You told God, yourself to do that. God told me to pick up that snake and drink that poison. He told me to do it. Stop. <laughs> Just no more. All mm. right. Well, this guy is going to say, watch the Holy Spirit blow this guy's mind. Okay. <sighs> Share my screen. Let's see what we got here. All right. I think you can see it now. Sorry to interrupt you, bro. It's gonna sound super strange. I'm a, I'm a Christian. Felt like to like come talk to you real quick. Are you a Christian? Be, be honest with me. But you got a family that is. That's what the Holy Spirit was telling me. He said, "Is your mother?" Yeah, she. The, that's what the Lord was speaking to me. He said that this guy's mother over here. And I was walking by. I was like, God, I don't want to go talk to this guy. He's doing his own thing right now. But the Holy Spirit was telling me like, Hey, this guy's mom's been heavily praying for him. Well, let's just be. A, let this just be a sign to you, dude. Jesus is real. He loves you. It's not religion or tradition or a rule book of the Bible. You might have grown up in religion. All right. Did you go to like a Christian school or anything like that? Yeah, the Holy Spirit was just telling me that. Listen, that was probably a really trick traditional Christian school, right? That's not that's not Jesus. Scripture says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and liberty. That doesn't mean like liberty to go out and do whatever like you want to hurt the heart of God. I wanted to come over and tell you that, you know, Romans 8, 1, it says there's no condemnation. That means there's no guilty a plea for those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, your parents might have been hard on you, but I do feel like there's a genuine love they do have for you in their own way, even though they might be super tra traditional and stuff. They want me to come over and tell you, go out of my comfort zone, talk to you, and I, you got your hoodie on, you're watching your thing, I didn't want to bother you. And I came over here super awkwardly, but Jesus loves you, Holy Spirit, hey, he's after you. Let's just be assigned to you, even though you grew up like that. That's not a full revelation of who Jesus is. Your parents, they love you, even though they got their own weird, hard, kind of hard love way of showing things. And that Christian school, that's not a reflection of life with Jesus. Yeah, I'm Joshua, by the way. So he's like, he's sorry, like, I was on mute. No, so he's like, he's like, oh, the Holy Spirit told me to come bother you. I didn't want to bother you. I just, I was just doing my own thing. I don't want to be rude. I don't, that's why he pulled his phone out and started recording himself doing it. I didn't want to be rude though. I was just, I'm a meek, humble servant of the Lord. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I didn't want to come and bother you because I'm so meek and humble, but I pulled my phone out so I could record myself doing this. And then I like, he, he's like, he's like the fortune tellers when he's like, he's, he has a question. He's all, did you go to a Christian school? And the guy says, yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's what the spirit had told me. I was just confirming. If the spirit had told you, why didn't you say it? The spirit told me you go to a Christian school. But he had to confirm first in case he was, in case the spirit was wrong, in case the Holy Spirit gave him misinformation, he had to check with the guy. <laughs> he had like, to check with the guy. What would you do hey, if no. I got, what would you do if a guy came up to you and started doing this to you? I would, I would be like, I would, I would play along and I'd answer his questions and he'd be like, did the holy did the holy did, did did you go to a Christian school? And I'd be like, Yeah, I did. And then he'd be like, Yeah, that's with the Holy Spirit. And then I'd be like, Psych, I didn't go to a Christian school. <laughs> <laughs> I just psych got your, boy. Got, got your boy. I didn't go to a Christian school, baby. I didn't go to, I went to public school. I went to public school. That's why I'm so dumb, but not dumb enough to be duped by charlatans <laughs> like you. So I just proved you to be a false prophet because I know the Holy Spirit wasn't wrong. You were wrong, baby. And you lied, son. You lied. That's, I, That's psych. Ha! Got him. That's how I you'll, done you'll notice the guy is never shown. That's in how I would handle that situation. Right. But you'll, you'll notice the guy he's talking to is never shown in the video. Never. Not once. <laughs> How much you, are you wearing tinfoil in your mouth? <laughs> no, this is a grill. This is a real grill. It's a go with the hoodie. Really? No, it's it's aluminum. That's foil. gangster. <laughs> you have to wear it. Anyway. You, you to, this <laughs> you I had to make it even more gangster, right? Because a pink hoodie is like already pretty high up there in the gangster level, right? <laughs> All right, let's That's go to the next fly. one. I here. wish I had a grill. <clears throat> oh man. All right. Let's see. This one is Pope Francis's conspiracy. All right. Oh, gosh. This one is. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> what do Pope Francis and the giant of Atacama have in common? Well, in the year 2022, when Pope Francis went to Chile, on one of the robes that he wore while visiting, he had a symbol of the giant of Atacama. 
The giant of Atacama is a large geoglyph in the Atacama Desert in Chile. It's almost 400 feet long, and it's the largest prehistoric geoglyph. But it's also thought to be a deity that the people in the region at one point worship. So it really makes you wonder, why would Pope Francis put this false god, this symbol, on his robe? Let me know what you think in the comments. This is suspicious. <sighs> okay, <clears throat> first of all, it's not true that the... Uh, the symbol is not a deity. There is no evidence whatsoever to suggest that the indigenous right. pe the indigenous people of Chile and Argentina were worshiping this this uh, this image. It's not a deity. That's something that he made up or somebody made up. There are some people that think that it was a false god. It's not. It's actually an astronomical calendar. The indigenous people of Chile and Argentina were using it as a calendar so that they would know when the seasons would begin to to plant crops. Um, so no, the whole premise that the, that the Pope had a fake false deity on his in his on his garbs on his liturgical garments, it's not true. That that symbol isn't a a god. It was never known to be a god or worshipped as a god by anybody. That's something that conspiracy theorists made up. It's just not true. It's a symbol right. of Chile and Argentina. That's yeah, and their culture. Is. And there's Which, nothing right. wrong with taking yeah. one's culture and using it to praise God. Nothing wrong with that. You have it over yes. and over and over with the Israelites. You have it as a concept found in the New Testament, in the New Covenant community. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, that's why we use wedding rings, right? We took something yeah. from paganism and used it for good because it's not inherently evil to use a wedding ring, even though it originated in paganism. So it's not right. inherently evil to use some right. of these things from cultures even if they're non-Christian cultures. There's nothing wrong with that symbol. It's not inherently evil. So there's nothing wrong with using that as a way to appreciate one's culture and use that in the divine liturgy. How is that a problem? It's not. And in fact, again, the liturgical vestments right. we use in the Catholic Church, there's all kinds of cultural appropriations that take place with them to begin with. But you don't see massive conspiracy theory videos about those per se, because... A lot of times people don't know that there's already cultural appropriation behind them. She says, this is suspicious. And, it, it makes, and she plays that video. It, it makes seriously. It, it, it makes sense that Pope Francis would wear that because he's from Argentina. That's like a, yeah. a symbol that all Argentinians and all people from Chile know that symbol because it, it's, it represents uh, uh, their culture. That's all it is. There's no big deal whatsoever. And it, it isn't a God. She said, this, she said, this is suspicious. And that is oh, what was played for us. I mean, come on now. <sighs> okay. Let's go on to the next one here. Um, another Islam apologist. I think this is the same guy that we saw earlier. He He's is the only one that Islam has. <laughs> he is atrocious. And then he gets this guy who's incredibly ignorant and he schools him and he thinks it's a win. Like he thinks it's a W to school this guy That's who suspicious. literally is, is is ignorant. Yeah, <laughs> it's That's like suspicious. it's like That's, That's who you need to triumph over this guy who literally knows think, nothing about Christianity. I, I, I actually think that the, the the Christian guy. I think he's a troll. I think he's trolling the Muslim dude. I think he's he's a troll. It's pretty yeah, funny actually. All right, so. let's watch it. Do you believe in one God? Yeah, Jesus. You believe Jesus is God? God. Yeah. So who did he worship? God, but you said he is God. Yeah, God is God, God in Jesus. No, no, is Jesus God, or is he not God? Yeah, it's God in Jesus. Is Jesus God? Yeah, there's two, won't there? There's two. Okay, yeah, God. So the God and Jesus are not the same. Then there's two. Yeah, there's two. Okay, we're making progress. So what now? Believe in that. Let me tell you. Yeah, I believe there is Jesus, and he's a prophet of God. Who was sent by God to guide mankind, and He told the people, "Worship the one God." Okay, Jesus. Jesus was a prophet that said, "Worship God, not worship me. Worship God." God. Okay. Do you agree with that? I agree. There's one Jesus. Oh, stop. stop. Okay. Do you agree that Jesus <laughs> told people, "Worship one God"? One God. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. We we're on the same page now. Did Jesus pray in the Bible when he put his head to the ground? Did he pray? He prayed, yes. Okay. Who is he praying to? His God. Okay. 
So then he's not praying himself, he's praying to God. Yes. Okay. So Jesus, did he bring a message to the people about God? He brought a message to people. Okay, so he's a messenger of God. Yeah. Good. We agree on that. So we agree there's one God, and it's not Jesus. And Jesus prayed to that one God, and he brought the message of that God to the people, right? Right. That's the Muslim belief. That's what the Quran says. Okay. Where do we even begin? Obviously, we're equivocating here on the germ God. And that is because we're not making the proper distinction between one nature, three persons. Right. So if you do have three persons and you also have an incarnation from one of those persons, you're going to have communication, obviously in the form of prayer, between one and another. So you can speak of three persons as one God that doesn't rule out communication or prayer. So that it's just a fundamental basic misunderstanding of the Trinity that assumes Unitarianism. That, right. That's all he's, he's just assuming yes. Unitarianism. And so, and when you assume Unitarianism and you put it that way, yeah, it sounds absurd, but we're not assuming Unitarianism, even though you might, as a Muslim, we're not assuming that we're going to give good argumentation for the Trinity and the New Testament backs it up. And the Quran tells you to go to the New Testament. Well, the New Testament has one God and then three different persons identified as divine and so there's distinct. one god three different persons and they're distinct yes. they're yes. not the same person yes. i.e well at, at this point you have a theological conclusion there's in it's inevitable that you would have trinitarianism from it because yes. if you have again one god mentioned in scripture but then you have three distinct persons identified as divine and there's only one god but one is not the other and the other is not the other then you have to have, by necessity, Trinitarianism. And right. that accounts for the fact that you see the second person of the Trinity incarnate, praying to God the Father. Who's he praying to? God. Well, I thought you said he is God. He's praying to God the Father. Be more specific. Right. God the yes. Son, in his incarnate form, is praying to God the Father. Be specific. So he's not accounting for the Trinity and also not accounting for the incarnation. Yes. You know, even the Quran says that the spirit of God, the spirit of Allah, uh, is a creator. But the Quran says that only God is the creator. But then it also says that the spirit of God is a creator. Um, and uh, there's actually a lot of Muslims that recoil at this because they don't want to admit. Actually, in the Quran, where it describes uh, the incarnation, where it describes uh, you know, um, the conception of Jesus in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, it says that the God breathed the Spirit into Mary and that the Spirit created uh, uh, Jesus. So it says that the Spirit is a creator, but Muslims won't concede that. They don't like to concede that, even though that's what the Quran says, uh, because the Quran also says there are no other creators. But then it says that the Spirit is a creator. So it's almost like the Quran has like a a uh like an abridged like uh maybe not trinitarian maybe binitarian theology with the father like with god and, and the holy spirit um so it's even present even you know like in the quran itself so it's a concept that this muslim should is is somewhat familiar with i just find that very interesting yeah there there's some problems here with the quran too they're kind of mm -hmm. analogous to uh, what we deal with with the Trinity. I mean, you have the the Quran is supposed to be the eternal word of God. And so here you have something that is eternal, uh, that is distinct from God. And so it kind of poses some problems yes. for some Muslims. And then you also have a fascinating debate between two Muslims that took place not long ago. About a year ago, I've reviewed it on this show with Dr. Uh, Kandani. Uh, yeah, Khalil Andani and um, <clears throat> Jake uh, Brancatella. Uh, the Muslim metaphysician, that mm -hmm. debate is fascinating because it shows some of the difficulties that they have. And at the end of the debate, it was classic. Jake Brekatilla, um, or the Muslim metaphysician, he's obviously Muslim, debating another Muslim on this question of mm -hmm. is God one and how does that work? Uh, you know, he kind of gets cornered. And in the debate, it's shown that Jake kind of believes in a way that 
Allah is is a place. Allah it can be identified in relation to other things. So if yes. he can be identified as far as location and relation, that would make him physical, and that causes all sorts of problems. If Allah is then physical, and then at the end of the day, he just said, "Well, it's just the mystery." And I love the way Andani ended the debate. Also a Muslim, and he said, "Right, you're appealing to mystery, exactly how the Christians appeal to mystery with the problems of the Trinity, and yet you constantly get on to Christians for appealing to mystery for the Trinity. So you're being inconsistent." It was like the best way to end a debate that I've ever ever heard. It was classic. Yeah, well, you know what's really interesting is that, um, and that's that's based. I love that, but um, that's funny. The the uh, so the Quran and Muslims believe that the Quran is uncreated, right? Because they say that the the, the uh, word right that the right. word is the uncreated. Eternal. Yeah. So they'll say the word is uncreated. You know, the word that is you know in the Quran is uncreated, but then they will say that the word is not Allah. Right. So then if the word is not Allah, but the word is uncreated, now there's something else that is uncreated that is not Allah. And the Quran says that only God, only Allah is uncreated. So now you're saying that the word is also uncreated, but the word is not Allah. So again, you can see like remnants of like Trinitarian theology, because that sounds like like John chapter one. The there, there's some, the they, they have yeah. some difficulties here. So if they're trying to pick on Christians for any difficulties we have in explaining have, the Trinity, they yeah. have the same problems. It's yeah. just they're, they're, they either don't know that or they're not being upfront and honest with you about it. Right, right. All right, let's go to the next one here. Um, <clears throat> that one was pretty entertaining. All right, this one is another exorcism. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Dare we? My little heart can't handle this, Michael. I'm just a baby. <laughs> All right, let's see it. All right, so I am fascinated by the uh, sociological and psychological implications of that video. But <laughs> I don't know where to begin. Uh, take it wherever you want to go. I love how in the beginning when the, the possessed guy is like trying to like attack him and the guy's fighting him off, but he won't drop the microphone so that everyone can hear what's, what he's saying to him. He won't drop the microphone to defend himself. He's still got the mic. Like remember when Jay-Z got attacked in the, in the elevator and he had like one hand in his pocket and he was fighting off Solange and he, he had his hand in his pocket and he's like, with his hand in his pocket, like all cool. And this guy has the microphone and he's just, that was, that was so fly. And then you know, I like how the, the, the people were reacting. Like if they were like at, like at a wrestling match or something, they're like watching, you know, they're like watching a wrestling show and they're all cheering and they're reacting. The, you, these, you Caribbean, know, these Caribbean people are, are so cool. You know what this reminds me of? Um, you, I'm going to see if I can show it to you. I, I did it. I talked about this on a show the other day. Okay, yeah, I think I can zoom in enough for you to see it. Okay, you know what this reminds me of with the, still the microphone in the hand? This was a pastor <clears throat> who told his congregation that he went to heaven. Uh -huh. And the photos taken of him in heaven, and he now sells these photos of him in heaven. He sells them to his congregation. He sells them to his congregation. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Are you ready? This. Are you ready? I haven't, wa I haven't watched right. that video. Oh my Look. goodness! <laughs> All right, now, now I want you to, I want you to. This, this is as close as I get, but I want you to take a look at this. This is a photo of him in heaven, right? Now, yes. I just want to point out. 
he does have this black microphone in heaven. <laughs> so somehow, somehow he snuck the microphone in heaven whenever, I guess, God took the picture of him. I'm just saying it kind of looks like a photo that was taken of you whenever you were preaching to somebody with your microphone in your hand and somebody just photoshopped that around. I, I don't know. That's my theory of what happened here, but I don't know. Maybe he did go to heaven with a microphone, but for some reason that just reminded me of that picture. So, anyways, I he looks like he looks like he's one of those snake handlers too. If you look at that other, in the picture, oh, the other one a, where he's handling, he's, <laughs> yeah, there's a snake right next to him. He's one of the snake handlers. But it's his face photoshopped into another person's yeah, face. <laughs> it looks like that's not even him either. It's so, not. It's somebody else's face. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I, I, I haven't watched that episode yet, but I think I saw oh, like you a need short to clip where, oh, where you're you like, is that, that the, so, some pastor called God on his cell phone or something? Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, it was that one. Yeah. You need to watch yeah, it. I, I wouldn't be I surprised. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if in that in that video that we just reviewed that we just watched if they had like a bucket for like tips and stuff. It's like a show they're like putting on a show and they're just like people are just dropping money in there just because they're put and you can tell if those two guys look like they're cousins too. Like they're like <laughs> they're in on this together. They look exactly they look like twins. You know what's crazy? What? So everybody knows about what happened to me a few months ago when I got robbed. Um mm -hmm. I don't even know if I should say this, but so the guy that robbed me has a twin. Mm -hmm. So there, there's there's two of them, and mm -hmm. it looks just like, just like these him? guys. Really? It's crazy, crazy, yeah. So uh, yeah, I guess they're like all twins. I don't know. Uh, pretty, pretty <laughs> did you funny. did you run into his twin recently too? I I, I ran into both of them. Oh, how did that go? That was how I found out who it was. I ran I ran oh. uh, literally two days after he robbed <clears throat> me. I ran into him. I I knew I saw. Uh, I ran into him two days after he robbed me, and that's how I was able to. And you knew that guy. he. Oh, but, at the, but when you ran into him, did you know it was him? Yes, yes, because when he robbed me, I had I had pictures. I had pictures from camera footage of him. So I had him in pictures. And I literally two days later I ran into him at the store. And I'm like, What'd you say? I didn't say anything to him, but I was yeah. uh that's a smart I was, thing. I, I that's pulled smart. out the, because I pulled out the he, photo. Yeah. That's a smart thing because I could just tell you human nature may have resorted into violence and you might be in prison for something that you didn't even plan. So Michael, that's a smart move right there because you don't know hu Michael. human nature, human nature will jump out out of nowhere, unpremeditated. You know, you you don't even think about it. Then you end up doing something you regret because you put I yourself was, in that situation. And then Michael, you're I, in prison, I was this so. close, Michael. I was, cause I'm a hooligan. That's I was a, ready. But that's a smart but, thing to do. Don't put yourself in a situation yeah. where you're going to, you know, just do something that you're going to regret that you don't, plan but you're it's yeah. in the heat of the moment and it's that mistake that you deal with for 20 30 years from now yeah so it's smart that you know what let me just not put myself in the situation i see the guy but i'm gonna look the other way because i'm gonna be paying for this for a long time if i make the wrong decision and, and i was yeah i was way smarter i just followed him out to his to the parking lot so I watched him get in his car got his license plate down there you go. No, there you go. And then right, and then there you I go. Got, I got all. The, there you go. I got all of his info. There you go. I got everything. But, I got all. But of don't. It. But don't. Don't go and confront because that's when things escalate and you end up doing something you're going to regret for the next fifty years. And so that was a smart I'm, thing to do. A lot of people aren't that smart, and that's how they end up in prison for life. It's because I'm such a goon. I know, but <laughs> I'm kind of smart. But I thought about it. A smart good. Right? <laughs> smart. I went to. I went to confession over it. I had to confess like all the things that I wanted to do to that boy. I, understandable. I was, understandable. That's yeah. definitely understandable. But you made the right choice. You went to confession instead of to prison. So <laughs> I'm glad you made the right decision. We wouldn't be doing this show right now. I, I, right? That's what I was thinking. I was like, Man. I could whip this boy right now, but then I'd right. never have a chance to be on Michael Lockett's well, show. You, but but you, yeah, you have those boxing skills. You got those yes. boxing skills, and so Do yeah, people know, I, I don't it. even think people know that about me either. But now you now you've revealed that. I, I dropped a dime that. on you. <laughs> I'm a boxer too. <laughs> now now we're feeling another that's secret. Talk, <laughs> that's why I talk so much. You know what? Because I can fight. So I'm like, I like it's just the boxer. I like, it's I like, a boxing yeah, thing. I, I talk all kinds of trash because I know that if it comes down to it, I can handle myself. You know well, what I'm there saying? There you go. Well, but yeah. but just keep it keep it limited to defense, self defense only, because I promise nothing good comes from the other direction. Nothing like this, good comes from it. I'm like starting comments, fights. Nothing good. Yeah. This comment says right here, confession instead of prison. Amen. <laughs> I'll take it, right? Oh, man, I could tell you so much about 
how I made the wrong decisions, but God saved me from them. And golly, yeah, here I am. So I'm, I've learned from some mistakes. God saved me and um, not going to keep making the same mistakes again. So, so listen to my advice when I say don't put yourself in a situation that you'll end up regretting. I'm All right. Let's uh let's go to another one. Is Jesus hateful? Uh okay. This one's about 30 seconds, so it's not very substantive, but let's go ahead and review it anyway. Okay. So Christians, help me out. Who is Jesus talking about when he says do not cast pearls before swine? And if you are categorizing human beings as swine, how are you not dehumanizing people? And how is that not hateful ideology? How is it right for Jesus to say to love your neighbor, yet then he says to hate your family? How is that not an oxymoron? Okay. It, it's not an oxymoron. It's hyperbole. Right. Not an oxymoron. It's hyperbole. Right. He literally says, you know, cut off your arm if, if yeah. it offends you. Obviously, he's not saying literally, al although I think Origin actually did castrate himself because he, he did take it. <laughs> seriously, seriously, he yeah, did he castrate did. himself because he took he it did. literally. He did he castrate. Did. And, and there were this actual, there were people who would castrate themselves because they were reading these things too literally. I think yeah. actually several canons had to be issued from councils telling people they cannot castrate themselves. I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious because I, they were not understanding that this was hyperbole. I know that I would need a cannon to keep me from doing that to myself. I, I, I would have totally done it if there weren't cannons telling me <laughs> not to do it. You, you would think you wouldn't need a cannon for that, but evidently they did. So That's so funny. Um, but yeah, obviously this is hyperbole, so he's not yeah. literally saying you have to hate somebody, actual hatred. So yeah, yeah there's no contradiction here. Um, and and um, you know, what, what about calling people dogs? Isn't that not loving? Yeah, right. Yeah, well... In the video, he mentioned calling people swine, right? Don't catch your pearls before swine. Well, um, <clears throat> that is a saying that actually goes back to, to Judaism. Swine, because swine is a, a food that they, that they couldn't eat, right? Because of the law of Moses. That was a saying that was meant to say someone who's a Gentile. Like if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. So they'll call them swine or swine eaters, meaning that it just means that they're not Jews. Um so it's Jesus using the expressions of the day to make points and they're hyperbolic and we might take them as something that's like rude or insensitive or mean or even hateful. But it, it was just a saying that, that the Jews said back then, you know, about calling non-Jews, they called them swine or swine eaters, meaning they're not of us. They're not part of the covenant. So, um, yeah, if, if you're not a first century Jew, I guess you just don't know. Is it permitted for us in apologetics to call our opponents swine eaters? Well, <laughs> I've done swine? it. I'm just <laughs> well, you, I, I do. I, I have. I, I do occasionally eat pork, so I guess I'm a swine eater too. So. I don't eat pork. That's another you exclusive. Don't? I don't yeah. like pork. I don't like yeah. it. I do not. I don't eat pork. I can't do it. I just can't really? do it. I, well, I can I'll understand. I'll tell you why I eat pork. I'll tell you why. Okay. All right? Okay. Because I was deprived of it when I grew up in Israel. They, because you cannot, you, you cannot find pork. Yeah, you cannot right. find pork there. So right. I would literally, this is a gross story for y'all, but because I missed the taste of bacon, when because uh -huh. when I was a real little kid, you know, two, three years old, I had bacon before. I missed that taste by the time I lived in Israel. So no lie, this is me about seven, eight years old, okay? I would take some bologna. Ew. And I, would, I know, right? <laughs> Who eats bologna? I take. I, I, I didn't have a whole lot of money, right? So <laughs> I was happy to have some bologna. Uh, yeah. bel believe it or not, I actually, when I, when I was a child, I, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but I actually would actually steal food uh, a lot of times when I was a kid. I was that hungry, that hungry, oh, seriously. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, I had some bologna and I heated it up in a microwave. And whenever you overheat it, like two minutes or something, it's obviously going to fry the bologna and turn it like black. Mm -hmm. But I liked the taste of the burned bologna because it was the closest thing that I could get to pork, the, to, to the taste of bacon, 
right? So I would literally eat that stuff because I missed that taste of the sausage and bacon. So when I came back, yeah, I fell prey to the to the swine, brother. <laughs> you said you said no, huh? I don't, have you ever I had pork swine. before? Have you ever had pork before? When I was young and ignorant, when I was little, yeah, I, I would. I it's gross. I don't dine on the swine. No pork on my fork. No mm. pork on your fork. <laughs> nope. Ah, oh, this is Never. funny. Okay, I won't do it. we're we're learning all kinds of things about you on these streams. We it. need to keep doing them. <laughs> I won't do it. But you eat meat, though, right? Oh yeah, I eat meat. But I just I'm not a pork just guy. Just not pork. Just not pork. Okay. Well, I guess it, I'm the swine eater here, but nobody could call oh. you a swine eater. So they, they can only throw that accusation at me. All right. So <laughs> let me share my screen. We'll go on to the next one here. <laughs> All right. Let's Someone go. Someone just said that they're unsubscribing from they're me unsubscribing. because I don't eat pork. <laughs> oh, well. I thought they were going to subscribe because I did eat pork. Oh, my All goodness. Right. All right, let's go. This one is a lady speaking demonic tongues, according to this uh, content creator. Okay, let's see it. Did she say ra? I thought this was a rap song that I just She's started. Like, ra. <laughs> oh, yeah. He said, this is not the tongue. This is demonic. How do you know that? It's demonic. All right. <clears throat> she speaks a demonic <gasps> tongue. So, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I love the indefinite article in the title here. She speaks a demonic tongues. I, I love the use of the indefinite article with a plural subject. I mean, this is this is incredible. Okay. She's practicing her vowels. She's practicing her vowels. Hey, you, you know what it's you. like? You know, you know, whenever you go to... Yeah, whenever you, you know, try to prepare your vocals for singing, uh, he, uh, oh, oh, that's what I feel like she's doing uh, here. I feel like that's like, what's taking place here. She's, she's just preparing for, for... She's just preparing to sing in the choir. She's this auditioning. A, like, come on. Why do y'all gotta yes. accuse her like this? Does this sound like what you're hearing that sounds like a sound? It sounds like a sound. Oh, it's not a sound, it's a language. It's not a sound. This is not a it's demonic. So that's why when when people speak in tongues in church, it's not everybody that is praying in the spirit tongue. Some are praying in demonic tongue. That's why a ministry like this, ministers don't know, many pastors don't actually know that, that there's a clash of tongues in the congregation. That's why every ministry must have what we call prayer team that is strong in the, in the, in the, in the boardroom praying. Is somebody being murdered in the background? It looks like someone that's really possessed in the background in there. And he's over here. Yeah. Ministry is not a natural, it's not a secular organization. That's one thing people don't know. If you run ministry as a secular system, you will crash. You will be gone. Demons will finish with you. Because the systems differ. What we are up against are spirits, are demons, evil spirits. And they are well structured in their own realms and dimensions. So that's why ministry, if you, if you are... Wait, why is he using this as a teaching moment? I thought he would, like, give an exorcism or something. What? Exactly, right? She, What's this going poor on lady, here? This poor lady yeah. apparently is suffering. She's, like, yeah. suffering really bad. Yeah. And he's like, let me teach you some theology yeah. about how this... <laughs> it's like when, when doctors, like, do, like, surgeons, when they're doing surgeries and they have, like, all of, like, the students. And he's like, now you cut here and this is yeah, why yeah, you yeah. do this. It's like he's treating it like he's like a surgeon or something and he's educating the, the people on how to... On the procedure, and notice I don't know if you notice the lady uh -huh. only starts going into her tongues when they put the microphone up to her face, uh -huh. so that's her cue. They put the microphone up to her face, and then she starts saying it. But as soon as they remove the microphone, she stops speaking. Why is that? Uh -huh. You see that? These people don't I think about didn't their... even notice that. Yeah. That's a good point. That's Not her cue to start acting. Spiritual, you'll be offended the way ministry is run if you're not groomed and trained. 
you'll be offended because it's, 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 it's in, it, in a parallel line from that of the secular structure. This is a language. This is a demon speaking now. What oh. is what what oh, is doing that? Is that? <laughs> You're right. She didn't start making those sounds until they put the microphone up. Then she's yeah. yeah. She, she's asking for more demons to assist. What oh. is what what oh, is doing oh, that? Is that? <laughs> and if you, if you notice too, oh. she didn't start. She didn't start shaking and convulsing like that again until she knew that the camera was back on her. When he yeah, 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 yeah. Back to her, that was her cue. That he, she, yeah, <laughs> that's what we heard. Blah, 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 blah. This is no structure. This is a language. This is a demon speaking now. What oh. is what? What is doing that? Is that? She she's asking for more demons to assist, but the gates are closed. She they they can't come. This is not her looking now. She's seen another rain. But all you're seeing is some eyeballs that is fixed somewhere. Watch. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Watch. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I cannot take this seriously. This makes us Christians look ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I can't. <sighs> Any comments? Comments, questions, cares, concerns. <laughs> Any, well, I have a lot of concerns. <laughs> I have many concerns. She said, I'm very con I'm concerned said, about the person that was I don't know why they were worried about her with that <laughs> other person screaming in the background, bloody murder. That's that was my concern. Is that that was kind of weird, but I, I need to say the I need to say the to 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 one more time. Hold on, <laughs> I gotta make sure y'all y'all can hear this. Hold on, hold on. Let's play that one one last time. She's seen another rain, but all you're seeing is some eyeballs that is fixed somewhere. Watch. <laughs> so do you think that she's making this up or does she really believe that she's possessed like wh which one do you think it is um i think she's making it up because you pointed out that she doesn't make any she doesn't start doing anything and she doesn't make any sounds until the camera and microphone is on her yeah that's suspicious that's weird right that's Right, I, I mean, I don't so. want to impute false motives to her or anything, but come on, there's no way she really <laughs> believes that. Like, surely, surely she doesn't think that she's possessed. Surely, this is just an act. I mean, I know, I know for one, it's not real demonic possession, like, that's already yeah. ruled out. That's already ruled out. Someone in the chat said the guy has magic fingers, <laughs> and then someone else in the chat just said that she's hungry. That's how I act when I'm hungry, honestly. I act like <laughs> Well, if I'm, if I'm, when I get hungry, I, that's how I behave. You I'm say, like, you said, to, to, to. Yes, that's what I say. That's that's, that's the say. sign. That's, that's the, the sign, sign you're hungry. That's the sign. <laughs> that's how you let everybody know that you're hungry. That's what I say every time I, I step into a restaurant and the waiter's taking his time to come and take my order. I just make that little noise, and and, and means, everybody's gonna know that that means you're hungry because that's that naturally what that sound means. Yes, <laughs> naturally, yes. right? All right, yes. let's go to the next one here. Oh my gosh! Um, Muslim apologists on the sign of the cross. Oh, boy. and it's the same guy talking to the same ignorant person. Oh. Now, now, this is how I know this guy's trolling. I think this is this one right here. He got a lot of mileage out of this guy one way or another. Yeah. All right. All right, let's go. When you go to church, we don't go to church. We go to a masjid. Well, Muslim, I go to church. <laughs> Listen, oh, wait, well, what is <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That was not the cross because he literally did one, <laughs> two, went. three. That was the Triforce from The Legend of Zelda. That was like, <laughs> 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 that was not a cross, okay? 
across there's like four points of contact right that, I yeah don't know, that was a triangle that yeah uh, he don't even know what, i don't think this guy's a christian he's just throwing the muslim yeah i kind of feel like he's not a christian i feel like this was this was con contrived all right, all right let, let's watch it together what is this i go and pray did jesus what? teach you that jesus did he taught you to do that to pray that's not this little cross thing you did did, yeah. you, did jesus do that yes. no he didn't well, show me in the bible i do it myself but Jesus didn't do it. So you don't follow Jesus. You follow yourself so what did, or your church. What did Jesus do that? He put his forehead on the ground and prayed like I do. And so he did. Yes, he did. Jesus. Jesus. And so he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes. And it's in your Bible. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> He's trolling him. <laughs> Has to be a troll. That's funny. I, I Yeah, I feel like I, I don't think that this was real. Like nobody would really respond this way. Yeah. I, I, I nobody who's sincere. I, I think that this is clearly just contrived, right? Yeah. Or just trolling, like you said, one of the two. So it's either a setup or he's just literally, you know. Yeah. No. Um, oddly enough, however, <coughs> you do see the mark of the sign of the cross on the covenant people in the book of Revelation. Right. They have been marked with the sign of the cross. Mm -hmm. And that is why the earliest Christians would mark themselves with the sign of the cross, because it is actually something that you find there in the Apocalypse, in the book of Revelation. However, in that day, they would do it like this. They would trace as a it cross on, on their forehead, because in the book of Revelation, it says that it's actually a mark of on their forehead yeah. so before they wouldn't do the large sign of the cross they yeah. would do just the trace on the forehead yeah mm -hmm. the, the sign of the cross evolved it's actually a very like a very jewish thing you know how jews have the, the phylacteries right on mm -hmm. their uh on their head and then on their hand and that that's it's it signifies that you have the word of god in your mind and then in your hand meaning your actions and uh it tra it, it, it evolved and even in the roman right the roman right actually uh Right before the gospel is proclaimed, um, it does. It's the full sign of the cross where you trace it on your forehead, on your lips, on your heart, and then you do the full sign of the cross. So it encompasses all of it on the forehead. Uh, so that the gospel be in your mind, uh, over your lips, that the gospel may be what you speak, and then over your heart, that it may be on your heart. And then when you do the sign of the cross on your shoulders for the work that you carry on carrying the cross. And that's the, the, the significance of, this, of the uh, sign of the cross. And the sign of the cross as a prayer is, I think that's a good example of a, a human apostolic tradition. What did you say? <clears throat> Something that mm -hmm. came from the apostles, that the apostles <clears throat> taught the church that originated with them, uh, mm -hmm. a practice to do it as a prayer. And it's also a way that a lot of Christians in times of persecution would identify themselves if they traced the cross on their forehead or on their lips, or that's how you would know this person's a Christian because he just traced the cross on himself. Uh, so that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and St. Basil actually in his work on the Holy Spirit mentions that as one of the uh, traditions that comes from the apostles. He mentions a whole bunch mm -hmm. of liturgical traditions, and one of them yeah. is the sign of the cross. Yeah. Yep. All right, so let's go to this next one, that Catholicism is an esoteric worship of Lucifer. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's watch it. Catholicism is esoteric Luciferianism because in Catholicism, people are taught to pray to who? Mary. When you pray to Mary, you're no longer actually praying to God or reaching God or interacting with God. You are now interacting with the female aspect of Satan, a.k.a. Lucifer. So that is how Catholicism is esoterically, which means hidden. That's how Catholicism is esoterically Luciferian because it has deceived many people into believing that they're worshiping jesus when they're actually not and that's how it's esoteric and that's why it's luciferian because that says marvel not for satan himself has transformed himself into an angel of light hence we get the name light bringer lucifer false light so um the queen of heaven mary that's lucifer anytime you hear the reference queen of heaven that's that's actually the female spirit of satan so that's going to be a veneration of every divine goddess through every uh can we can we pause it there michael can we, can um, we pause it there <clears throat> wow okay okay so she's saying that um 
that Lucifer has a, a female spirit? Where is that in scripture? Where does scripture say that there is a female aspect? I'll, I'll tell you where that, she's getting this from. That she's sounds esoteric it, to me. I was going to say, she's getting this from esoteric knowledge. <laughs> so yes. the only one who's suspect of esotericism is here her. is her. <laughs> That sounds like something the Gnostics would have came up with. <laughs> sounds like something even... this somebody who studies witchcraft would say. <laughs> and and not only that, but it's completely false, just metaphysically speaking. Because so uh, she says that uh, Lucifer is an angel, a fallen angel, and then she says that there is a, a female aspect of Lucifer, a female version of Lucifer. Angels, which are pure spirits, don't have gender. There is no gender. Gender is accidental to... So, so wait, hold on. Are you just telling me she misgendered Lucifer? She just misgendered Lucifer, brother. I think she should get canceled. I think that she should get canceled, banned. Uh, <laughs> she should, you know, be boiled in acid and have her fat sold for soap or something. Something like that, because she's... that. She just misgendered Lucifer, brother. That's totally not woke. That's not... <laughs> That's yeah, a microaggression, brother. Yeah, this yeah, this is totally not woke at all. I'm not even finishing that video. I'm done with that one. I'm done. Unless you had another comment on it, I'm done with that one. She already messed up because <laughs> angels don't have gender. Pure spirits don't have gender. So that's... <sighs> I, I don't know she's, where she's the esoteric from. one. I don't know where she's getting this from, but it's obviously not from Christianity. So... Okay. Oh, my All right. So this one is <clears throat> Catholic is not Christian. All right. Well, we've heard this once or twice, right? Well, let's consider what his argumentation is for this claim. Just a couple of ways that the Catholic Church is not Christian. In fact, they are satanic. That bent cross being one. That is a representation of a dead, weak Christ on the cross. We know Christ isn't on the cross anymore. He's not in the tomb. The tomb is empty. He is risen, but yet they prayed him around as a dead Christ. Here's how ridiculous of an ar argument this is, okay? Jesus, because he's not on the cross, you can't depict him on the cross, okay? So two, two points. Number one. Jesus is also not physically here on earth, right? Physically. He might be sacramentally, but he's not physically. He might be spiritually, but he's not physically here on earth, right? Because we believe he ascended into heaven. So by this argumentation, you can never make any depiction of Jesus at all because he's not even here to begin with. So this is a silly argument. Number two, when you open up the Bible and you read about the crucifixion, you should take that page, burn it, and say, heresy, no, he's not on the cross anymore. So you can't even talk about him being on the cross because he's not there anymore. How dare scripture depict him on the cross because he's not on the cross anymore. This logic is ridiculous. Not, not only that, but the apostle Paul himself in First Corinthians, I feel like First Corinthians answers every Protestant objection almost because I always keep referring to that writing. First Corinthians chapter 1 and chapter 2, if Paul says two distinct times, I preach Christ crucified. I present to you Christ crucified. So he, he says it in 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, I preach Christ crucified. So why is he doing that, problem with it, Does huh? he not know that Jesus rose from the dead? Paul, why are you doing that? Exactly. See, so when people say that we Catholics are wrong for having a crucifix, the cross with the corpus on it, on it, I always say, well, haven't you read 1 Corinthians 1 and 1 Corinthians 2, where Paul says, I preach Christ crucified? Are you laughing at the comment that says that we needed to feed that girl bacon? I saw that, and that was hilarious. The <laughs> comments are hilarious. I'm laughing at all the comments right now. <laughs> Dude, the comments are so funny. This is the first time that I ever like watched the live chat while we're doing it. I <laughs> didn't know that was a thing. Out? I didn't, know, I didn't know you could do that, and my producer had to show me because I'm an old I'm an old man, and yeah. I don't know how to work this yeah. thing. Yeah. And, um, yeah. That's, that's Oh, it's entertaining. It's hard not to laugh. Reading some of this stuff. Someone said I was Matt Walsh because I canceled her. Makes sense. That Matt Walsh needs to sense. cancel her. That yes. makes sense. Maybe yes. this will appear on the Matt Walsh show and he'll do that. But I mean, we went Maybe. ahead and preemptively canceled her for Matt Walsh. We canceled so. the forum because there's yeah. a lot of cancellations already. But I'll, I'll tell you right now, reading the chat, it's going to be hard not to laugh the whole time. Because 
I, I will see some commenters say some really funny stuff. And I'm trying to be serious and I'm trying to engage something. And then I'll see the comment and I think, gosh, I, I can't keep a straight face on this. <laughs> some people say we should have thrown tomatoes at her. <laughs> let's finish this one, though. All right. Let me, let me right, go back finish. to him. Let's, let's, it's only like two minutes. Let's see. <clears throat> There's, I don't think there's any audio on that, Michael. There's no there's audio? No. Oh, shoot. All right, hold on. Hold on. Let me share my screen again. Vicar of Christ instead of Christ. We know Christ isn't on the cross anymore. He's not in a tomb. The tomb is empty. He is risen, but yet they parade him around as a dead Christ. They are all by claiming to be vicar of christ instead of christ how satanic can you get vicar of christ we're claiming the pope is instead of christ by that <sighs> somebody yeah. in the somebody in the chat put up a really good point too he said i wonder if at his church they put out nativity sets during christmas time because jesus isn't a baby anymore mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but you got to think. I mean, some of these some of these fundamentalists are at least consistent on that point, and they won't have nativity sets for those kinds of reasons. Yep. They'll say that's an idol. That's an idol. You can't have that nativity set. That's an idol. That's pagan. And then they will not have it. And they might even go and like set the thing on fire, kick it down or something. Or yeah, yeah. That's some, kind of things I see too. They're at least consistent on that point, right? Yeah, at least. <laughs> Consistently at wrong. We're at the two hour mark. I'm tapping out. I'm done. Two hours? Are you serious? We're at two hours. I'm done. You've been doing I'm done. this for I two hours. I can't do any more of this. I can't do any more. We had like one one more video, but I'm done. I can't do any more. But we're gonna do another one. We have to do two it. hours. That's crazy. This is like the fastest two hours of my life. I can't do any more. I'm tapping out. Like I'm I'm done. I'm done. When when I heard Vicar of Christ replaces Jesus, I'm 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 done. I'm done. <laughs> what do you do you have parting words for us? Any final concluding thoughts? All I have to say is do 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 <laughs> what did she say? It was like do 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 that's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> and ra -ta 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 -ta. Yeah, yeah, that. That. yeah that. she did. Hold on. I want to see if can I can. Let's see if I. Can that that. Yeah, but it was that. it was like a gratata at the beginning. I wrote it. I wrote it down. <laughs> you wrote it down. I wrote down to make sure that you were quoting her properly. I mean, you don't yes, want to you don't want to misquote her on it. Okay. No way. <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. Here it is. Demonic tones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta see that one more time before we go. Hold on, let me share my screen. <laughs> Ruba <laughs> Babash. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, hold on, hold on. It's muted. Okay. This is not a good topic. You know what? I. I I did uh -huh. misquote her though, because I only wrote down seven R's. It was yeah. actually just five. <laughs> right, right. Eyeballs is fixed somewhere. Watch. <laughs> it's like the battery ran out of energy. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Why do you think that seriously? Do you what do you think? Do you think the congregation was believing it? You think they took that seriously? No, because they were too busy dealing with the person that was really under attack in the back, the person that was screaming. That, that was the they were concerned with with that but that was something serious. This this was not part of the scheduled programming, it's not part of the show. <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird though if if they're doing these fake exorcisms and then they really actually have to deal with a real demon at one point? You know what? I would not be surprised if <laughs> if that happened for real. I I've I've seen I've seen one in person. Um, 
crazy. It's not like that. It's I are wish. You, are you easy. able to talk about it? Um, I mean, I could give like very vague, brief. Um, I I saw something in person. Uh, what it was was the person that was um having issues. She had been involved with like some like witchcraft stuff. It's really it's kind of a sensitive thing. I don't really want to sure you know give too much information but it d doesn't look like that like it was uh i wish it was that easy i wish that i could i wish that i could give a whole theological explanation and give a little lesson on it and then put my thumb on the forehead and and, and make her fall asleep i wish it was that easy that's not how it is we had to yeah. call in a priest we had to call in a deacon here's what i can tell you though this was this was based we called in uh, a, a priest right a priest that i've known for years, you know, uh, at, at the parish that I grew up in, called him in. He showed up with the priest. He showed up with the deacon. This part I can tell. This, this part is crazy. So when they showed up, right, we met them outside. We met them outside before we brought them into the house. And the deacon, he had a uh, a relic. I think it was of Pope John the 23rd. I think if I'm not mistaken, he had a relic of, of St. Uh, uh, John the 23rd, right? So he has it in his hand, right? He had it in his palm. He had it in his open palm like this, right? He was he had it in his hand. He showed it to us, and the relic, and I'm not exaggerating, and, and there's other people that saw this. The relic literally jumped out of his hand and it fell into the it fell into the grass, into the dirt, right? Mm -hmm. And we saw that, and, and I'm just like, what? And I was like, Deacon, did you just like did you just like throw it? And the, the priest, the father said, the devil doesn't want that in the house. Mm -hmm. And I saw this with my eyes. He had it right here in his hand, and it kind of just poop. It like it like jumped off of his hand into the dirt. And at first, it didn't register. I'm like, did he just drop it by accident? And and the priest said, the devil doesn't want that in the house. Let's do it. And the deacon picked it up, you know, wiped it off, and we went in there. The de the, the priest he pulled out. Uh, he had like a miter, like a bishop's miter, and he touched the bishop's miter to the person, and he straight up said, this right here proves that I have authority over you. By by the, by the authority of my bishop that the bishop gave me, that was gangster. <laughs> that was gangster. He pulled that joint out and he touched it right there and he goes, "Just so you know who you was, let me show you who you answered to, baby." And he put the miter right there. I'm like, "Oh, that was so hard! Oh, so hard!" That it's was, like I'm, that that sound effect. The oh, oh, I was that was gangster, man. That was like like I like. He just put that bitch. He just touched it. Just right this, just, just to remind you who, you who who's boss, who runs the show here. Oof! I think that was. I think I actually have it, it, man. Boom! Ooh. Bam! Oh, bop! Bada bop! Boom! Pow! Oh! Yes, yes. That's how it was. That's what, it was. <laughs> it was. It was serious, man. It was so gangster. <laughs> that was like woo. Oh, anyways, that's, that's, I'm, ta I'm tapping out. But you, you know what my parting words are, though. You know, you know what I'm gonna say, right? I think I know. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. That's it. That's all I have to say. Y'all hit the like button and the subscribe button, and go and check Voice of Reason out on YouTube. You got a YouTube channel? I do at Voice of Reason underscore. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok at Voice of Reason underscore clips. I'm also on the Twitter machine. I recently got on that at VOR underscore tweets. VOR for Voice of Reason. VOR underscore tweets. You can see me on the Twitter machine. I'm there. And then, of course, you could support me on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Voice of Reason. And I have exciting news. Today, that is today, September 15th, 7 p.m. Central Time, I'm having my very first ever group Zoom call with my patron. Oh, September 15th. Friday. Yeah, you, you have to do it in, in conjunction with the beat. It's simple, yeah. right? Central <laughs> Time. There you Zoom go. Call. That's going to do it. Voice of Reason. See my face. I'll see your faces. <laughs> if you want to be a part of it, go to <laughs> patreon.com forward slash voice of reason. The failed <laughs> Coco's tier. You'll get to talk to me face to face and with each other. It's going to be great. 
I can't wait. I might still be wearing this hoodie. Maybe I'll have the hockey <laughs> mask on. Maybe my orange ski mask. Maybe my black ski mask. Maybe my pantyhose that I had on under my ski mask. <laughs> You'll never know. Only way to find out is to go to patreon.com forward slash voice of reason. There you go. Mm. And don't forget. Do, do, do.